Good morning, everyone. We've uh, opened up the room and now the, the people are starting to come in. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes and make sure everybody gets logged in and we'll begin the webinar. So just a couple more minutes. Well, it looks like everybody has um, came into the room. Chris, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you great. Okay, great. Uh, thanks everybody for coming to our first webinar of uh, this Horde Academy season. Um, Chris Lundgren from Dosatron is here today and he's gonna present information on maintenance, repair and calibration of Dosatron injectors. Chris, take it away, please. You got it. Thank you for having me, Steve. All right, so today we're gonna cover the maintenance and calibration of the dosatrons. And the idea here is that we want everybody here to walk away with a little bit more knowledge on the interface of uh, making sure your dosatron is running properly. As we all know, dosatrons are an important part of the uh, facility when they're in use, obviously, because um, precise direct injection is going to be uh, important to our crops. So go ahead and get started here. So first I'll go over the couple different uh, dosatron options that are typical to this application. So first we've got a simple, uh, our most cost effective solution being the D25F1. So for those simple applications where just a one to 100 uh, fixed rate is going to work, this is a fantastic unit. So um, on a hand cart or on an area where uh, single hose flow um, or, or smaller irrigation system, these are a perfect fit. Oops, sorry about that. All right, and then D14MZ2. Of course, this is the most common unit that we're gonna see uh, for our application. And you know, be it that it's adjustable from one to 50 to one to 500, it gives us a nice range for being able to not only utilize it for um, for fertilizer injection, of course, that's obvious, but we're also going to be able to use it for chemigation. So we're able to use it for all of our chemical drench applications or beneficials. Great unit for that. Now the D45 is our one inch inlet outlet unit and it does uh, a maximum of 20 gallons per minute. And this workhorse is typical uh, to uh, boom irrigation, but also is great for uh, inline two hose applications or some, some larger size irrigation, uh, specifically drip. And then of course the, the D8, the 40 gallon per minute unit. This unit has, uh, has been a workhorse for quite some time in the greenhouse. Uh, I remember my first D8 being the the actual predecessor to this one uh, was the the unit I went to when I wanted precise injection in my in in my application in the greenhouse. So, you know, the D8 is a fantastic fit. It hasn't lost any of that. Uh, if anything, the interface has gotten easier, and uh, all of the plastics that it's now made out of, with the version that came out about five years ago now, um, is all a much more chemically resistant plastic and it is a fantastic unit um, for, the, for a main irrigation system. So AB tanks um, installed in series, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. 
Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button. <laughs> and then next is our 100 gallon per minute unit. This is the D20S. This is the workhorse. This is our typical central fertigation solution. Fantastic for, you know, your, your standard 20, 10, 20, 17, 5, 17. Your, your applications where a, either a single uh, bag um, is going to work, or if we have an A and a B scenario, so we've got an A and a B tank, um, then the D20S is fantastic for, obviously, again, central fertigation systems as well as large outdoor applications, and I'll show you some of those here in a little bit. <clears throat> now, my background is, is in boom irrigation. Some of you may, uh, may or may not know me from Cherry Creek Systems years ago, but uh, that's where I cut my teeth with Dosatron. Um, and to me, this is a very important um, graphic to look at. Obviously, it's intimate to myself, but also because of the fact that simply boom irrigation uh, with a dosatron can be done where it's hard plumb like this, or of course, there can be quick connects on either side of the inlet and outlet um, and short, short lengths of hose to make it easy to quick connect in and then we can move this uh, dosatron from boom to boom. So when we're doing overhead applications where we're looking to control either any kind of pathogen uh, or we're looking to put a foliar spray over the top, let's say something like a PGR um, for bedding plants, then this is a fantastic fit with, uh, with the booms. This was the, uh, the application uh, I, I'm always excited to show with the D20S. So this is 800 gallons a minute. And actually, as of this year, uh, I wasn't able to uh, get the updated photo in time, but he actually is now doing 1,200 gallons per minute in this field. Uh, this is a, a mum field. And gosh, I don't remember the number of mums that's, that uh, is being uh, taken care of and, and fertigated through the dosatron system here. But um, it's I know that it's not, too short of, of a million mums outdoors. So um, I've always found that to be quite impressive of an installation. This is where we're, and we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth here about parallel installations, but the idea here is that we're able to utilize the D20S, the 100 gallon per minute unit, and continue to add on to it to make it uh, you know, a much larger capacity system. So you get the reliability of the dosatron dosing, without all of the complications of some of these much larger, uh, more in-depth computerized fertigation systems for these. So as you can see, it's robust and it's doing the job just with water flow. Of course, we are trusted by the top 100 growers in the nation. And some of those are here, Dan and Jerry's, obviously all those dosa carts. They put one of those at every one of their uh, retail locations um, so that you know all of their uh, people that they have working out there and the brokers that they're utilizing to take care of their plants get fertilized. As we all know, when they go into retail, a lot of times they only look good for, for a certain amount of time. So Green Circle Growers, that's one of the uh, older D8 units, um, but they put them on every single boom that they have, um, as well as, um, you know, Color Point, uh, Metrolina. Some of the bigger guys um, are all using the Dosatrons. And what's amazing is to see that, of course, these, these companies have other technologies um, throughout their facilities that are managing certain fertigation protocol. But dosatrons continue to be uh, the backup or the redundancy in, in almost all of those cases, which I always find, um, you know, to be a great value of dosatron. Let's use it on top of what we're already doing to simplify an application of X or Y product. All right, so what I'd really like to go over now is, is the proper installations for Dosatron. The reason I think this is so important is all too often, um, you know, in our industry, we are all uh, very DIY. We like to do things ourselves. We like to make things uh, the way that we, you know, that are functional to our facility. And therefore, it's always good to just go over how we're going to see things installed. So. You know, it's always, but it's part of the warranty with a dosatron that you have a pre-filter in line. And really that pre-filter is there simply to catch particulate. Our biggest thing in industries such as livestock and horticulture, 
where we're drawing from a well <clears throat> and we're not really pre-filtering that water. Uh, maybe we just have fantastic water in that area and we're not pre-filtering and therefore um, we don't, you know, we're not pulling all that particulate out naturally through that process. It's always a good idea to drop a, a filter in line uh, before the dosatron. Dosatron, be it that it's plastic components, uh, you, you can imagine pieces of grit and sand are going to get in there. They're going to score the plastic and therefore hurt the, the product's ability, or I'm sorry, the unit's ability uh, to suck up the product, right? Because it's all about friction inside of that dosatron. It's good to have a pressure regulator if we're in an instance where pressures either spike, so we're just on a well, well pump that's on a switch, so pressure spikes to 90, 100 PSI as it kicks on and then evens out as it fills the pipe and gets things uh, rocking in the facility, uh, then we're going to want to put a pressure regulator because we've got a maximum of 85 PSI um, on our three quarter inch lines and 116 PSI on our one and a half inch, so the 40 gallon per minute units. And with that said, it's important to put these pressure regulators in if we're going to have those issues. And the main reason for putting the check valve uh, in this illustration is just to show that obviously we want to protect our water source from any back bleeding. Back bleeding would only happen if there was a gravity situation um, where we're sucking backwards and it would be very minute amounts because specifically the dosatrons are designed to kind of uh, combat against that. But uh, of course it can happen and so it's a good idea to put a check valve there uh, on the inlet side of the dosatron. Now in this particular case we're showing a bypass. This is really important when, we've want, when we want access to a particular chemistry so let's call the dosatron just a sing, uh, uh, you're pulling up a single part 20, 10, 20. And we want to isolate that from our standard uh, irrigation or fertigation line. This is a bypass scenario where that top line would be your standard either freshwater or, uh, or your standard uh, fertigation line. And then the dosatron, you know, can be turned on, those two ball valves that are on that are going uh, perpendicular right now. And then obviously the one on the top going, uh, that actually will turn that off and allow the passage of the water through the system or through the dosatron, I'm sorry. And then the water hammer rester is incredibly important that we put it on that jog so that when the uh, water actually comes back from water hammer, which is that phenomenon of water's in dynamic motion, we, we put a, a valve in front of it, or we let's just say we stop that, that dynamic motion that energy likes to go somewhere. And that's where we hear shaking in our pipes. Um, that water hammer rester in that orientation will actually uh, catch that, that energy uh, and, and take a nitrogen filled um, compartment and actually shoot it up into the spring and therefore alleviate that water hammer. So uh, the, the water hammer rester in this orientation is incredibly important. Now, when we start talking about A and B tanks, you know, this installation is very similar to the bypass installation where we've given ourselves fresh water access over and, and above the dosatrons. So now we're part of the main line and we're creating a bypass around the dosatrons versus here, the dosatron was in the bypass line, right? So it's away from the main line. Um, but in this particular case, same type of thing. We've got the same, we've got a water filter, we've got check valves, we've got these bypass runs to where we can run just A or just B. Uh, but in this A-B scenario, uh, the reason we put them in line and not in parallel, okay, so this is a parallel installation, meaning two lines going back in, you know, coming from one, going into two, back into one is parallel. Series is they're all in line. This is important for A-B tanks because if we were to do this, we may not get the exact amount of flow through both systems. So it's important that we put them in line. We allow that uh, product to blend before it picks up B. Uh, in some cases, we would put a mixing chamber kind of right in the middle between these two. Uh, a mixing chamber just allows for more contact time. So if it's a particular product that takes a while to really go homogenous with water, um, you know, if it's, a, for example, um, uh, geez, oh, like a, a nematode or something that has a little bit of carrier to it, then it's always nice to have that mixing chamber after the dosatrons or in between the dosatrons to allow for that product to get an adequate blend before it picks up, up something else. And of course on the outlet side you see that water hammer arrestor. They can be installed um, horizontally and again it's all about when that water hammer happens on the outlet side it's going to come back 
directly into that water hammer arrestor and not uh, bypass it and damage the dosatrons. All right, parallel installation. Now, the biggest thing about parallel installation is to remember parallel versus series. Series means I wanna add more products, but keep the flow the same. Parallel is actually where the we're trying to increase flow. So in this case, I've got two 14 gallon per minute dosatrons in line. Um, I'm sorry, on each on its own leg. Now I could get 28 gallons a minute maximum flow through that system. Now, obviously the inlet pipe and the outlet pipe would have to have that capacity to meet that, but it gives you a good idea of what it would look like to have a couple dosatrons installed in parallel to increase flow to 28 gallons a minute. And these are the same products, right? So this is both of those uh, suction filters are going into the same product because it's just product, the same product we're trying to get injected into the system, but we're just trying to increase flow. A lot of times this scenario comes up as we expand. So we go from, you know, a few greenhouses to a gutter connect and we want to keep the same central fertigation system, a lot of times this is how we can build off of that uh, to retrofit into higher flows. All right. <clears throat> now, in a lot of vegetable scenarios, we're going to see an ABC tank or that C tank being pH control, obviously. Um, typically, an acid could potentially be a base. So in these scenarios, I just wanted to show you a good example of just a simple a lot of times hydroponics or lettuce or tomatoes, you know, fruit crops or food crops. Uh, this is a fantastic scenario because we can have our A's and B's separated from each other. Uh, and through the growth cycle of the plant, we can vary the amounts of A and B. And then, of course, we can adjust pH accordingly. And then field irrigation. This is what's considered a large line bypass. So you'd have a large line on the bottom. Uh, that feeds out to the field and based on how we have this installed the uh, we would shutter this this butterfly valve here that's at the base uh, to cut off restrict some flow through the main pipe and allow some of that flow to then flow through the dosatron uh, line and out to the field now why this typical why this installation can be somewhat typical to uh, field irrigation is simply because um, in field irrigation the amount of accuracy is sometimes not as important as just getting the product onto the field. So they know X amount of products going to go into the field. So even if they don't have this bypass, let's say they shutter this valve one click too much this time versus last time, a lot of times uh, the field irrigation process allows for that. If we wanted to dial this in and be much more accurate in a large flow field irrigation scenario where accuracy does matter. So in a lot of cases, things like blueberries, um, a lot of our berry crops where it's, it's integral that, that we get those uh, nutrients and minerals available at the right time, then we're gonna wanna go with the scenario we saw earlier in the mum field with large 100 gallon per minute units allowing for higher flow rates and a higher flow capacity through the system. Chris, right. can, I, Chris, can I interrupt you for one second? Mm, absolutely. Um, I had a question come across here. Can you also do A and B tanks with the parallel system? The answer is people do it. The accuracy is going to be a struggle. So uh, the only way I would uh, see it successful in most cases is if you can imagine on each one of those lines, and here we'll go back to the drawing so we can talk about it. But if you can imagine each one of those lines, they're gonna have to have the exact amount of flow, right? So if we can oversize the pump that's pumping into this system, uh, and we can essentially assure that we'd have like 35 gallons available, well then we're gonna put flow restrictors on each one of those lines and essentially over force what we're putting into those lines. So let's say we put a 14 gallon per minute flow restrictor on each line. Each line will only allow 14 equaling a, to, uh, a total of 28, but those inputs better be very, very accurate. Pipe sizes need to be the same, pipe lengths need to be the same so that when we marry back together, an AB tank is going to make a very accurate blend. My, uh, my biggest concern when people do that is the um, conditional 
changes, conditional variables. So let's just say something happens to that pump and it's not able to keep up to that maximum flow. And now we have 10 gallons a minute going through A line and you know, eight gallons a minute going through B line. Well, now when we blend them together, we're not gonna have the accurate blend that we're looking for. So the answer is there's a way to do it, but if you wanna just dead, dead on, you want the, the, the idea of, you know, put a dosatron in and not really have to mess with it, then I would recommend in series and then just uh, design it according to the flow necessary. Um, last note on that, Steve, is that we can put an A and a B on both lines. So let's say that we needed A and a B tank and we needed the increased flow. Well, I could have two dosatrons on each one of these legs. So they'll have A and a B and an A and a B and they're marrying back together. Perfect, thank you. And just real quickly, by the way, everybody that's listening as a participant, if you move your cursor down to the bottom of the screen, there'll be some pop-ups that, pop that come up. And if you click on the Q&A, you can type in a question. It comes to me and then I'll interrupt and I will uh, get it over to Chris. Thanks, go ahead, Chris. I don't know what happened there. Uh, sorry, let me see if I, what did I do there? Sorry, uh, Steve. I lost your screen. Ah, here we go. I found it. We're good. Got it. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. Excellent. All right. So, all right. So, does that answer the question about parallel? Does everybody feel okay about that? Steve, do you feel like that was? Yeah. So, just a follow up on it that this guy had was uh, so it's like a parallel and series combined almost if you had the A and B buckets and two injectors per line. You got it. That would be right. Yep. And that is okay. totally acceptable. That would work fantastic because we could have 14 gallons a minute on one leg and eight gallons a minute on the other leg. When they blend back together, they're going to be the exact accurate mix you're looking for. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. All right. Fantastic. All right. So um, let's see where we are now. Okay. Greenhouse. All right. So we talked about field irrigation. Let's get on to preventative maintenance. So one of the biggest things about preventative maintenance to keep in mind is that, you know, dosatrons, again, I go back to the idea of having sand run through the line. You know, dosatrons are plastic, right? They are heavy duty plastic, there's no doubt. Um, and they'll, they'll fight against a lot of the clay carriers and a lot of the things that are in some of the products we're injecting. But they do struggle with hard water. They do struggle with calcification and, and mineral buildup. And in a lot of cases, we're running an A, B tank. Let's just say that there's, there's certain quality fertilizers that we're going to purchase because of a particular, um, uh, be, because of a particular need. Um, and, you know, those quality, or I'm sorry, particular price. Well, those quality of fertilizers may just have little grit and pieces that build up, or they might build minerals inside the system. So just keep that in mind as, as you uh, run your system that dosatrons do like preventative maintenance. They like a little bit of cleaning uh, throughout the year that um, will allow for some of that mineral buildup to kind of uh, be shed. We did put a, a blog together uh, alongside with Biosafe Systems, and you can find that blog on our website. If you go to our website, dosatronusa.com, and go to the blogs, you'll actually find a really nice write-up that that uh, Biosafe Systems did on cleaning lines and cleaning dosatrons uh, with their products. And they have a two-stage process in which you do that. So I'd encourage you to look at that if, if cleaning dosatrons and cleaning lines is something uh, that you can put into your standard operating procedures. All right, so setting the dosatron, turn the water supply off and allow pressure to drop. Now what that means is dosatrons are difficult to adjust when they're under pressure simply because it's the system's under pressure. Um, so we might be fighting against that pressure. So um, it's always good just to turn the ball valves off um, or if you accidentally screw the wrong screw, the locking nut, uh, let's say you go to open the locking nut and you're just not paying attention and you're trying to read your text at the same time and you pull the hose nut, nut off or the check valve nut off, uh, obviously under pressure, it's gonna blow water all over the place and, and all over you. So it's just a good uh, preventative uh, to turn the water source off when, when adjusting the dosatrons or servicing them, of course. Uh, but when you're setting the dosatron, go ahead and just loosen that locking nut. 
turn it down to the proper, uh, you know, the proper setting. Remember that the eyelets on the D14 and the D8, okay, the eyelets, so the 14 gallon per minute unit and the 40 gallon per minute, the eyelets are what we're worried about being pointed at that line, not the top of the collar, like some of the older dosatrons. Uh, but you can see that here, those two little eyelets. Okay. <clears throat> Now, we talked a bit about filters, but this is hard water. This is super alkaline water coming in, being blended with calcium nitrate, okay? So a 1500 uh, calcium nitrate with hard water like that. So it probably had high levels of uh, magnesium, had high levels of alkalinity, and it's going to bind up, and you're gonna see all of that film. And, and actually, in this case, it's almost hard. Uh, it turns into almost a concrete. So without a filter is, uh, is obviously going to cause some major issues. I'll give you some more examples. This is rust. So this is bacterial rust. Bacterial rust can oxidize inside with the uh, chelated irons that we're using in our nutrients. And then they can cause things like this. So this is, uh, this is a bit excessive, but that's what happens without a filter um, in the system. And when we don't Put maintenance into these. Remember, dosatrons need a little bit of love, right? So if you put a little bit of TLC into them, you're going to find that they run a long time. These users just use them until they stop working and then send them in, and this is what we find inside. All right, this is all from one particular user. It's hard to imagine, but a lot of buildup. And then you see what happens to the scoring on the inside. So that that uh, mineral binding happened. We got all of that rust buildup, and then that rust turns into grit, right, over time. And then once that grit turns into, um, or I'm sorry, gets in between the, the bell housing and the motor piston, that's what happens, right? So all that scoring just hurts friction. And that's salt buildup. So the reason that's a great example is because all of those little bits over time you know, start combining and binding to each other and create much larger um, pieces of grit. So it's good to keep that in mind. So there's an installation with a filter. Always have that filter ahead of your dosatron system. Now, if you have a, you know, uh, um, uh, inline filtration system that's way ahead of the dosatrons and everything's coming out as clear as can be and you don't have grit or fallout, then having this in front of the dosatron is not 100% necessary. But what I do recommend is anytime you're coming out to the greenhouse and you're going to put it on a cart, just get the little filter, you know, for whatever, let's say it's 30 bucks, $35, get the inlet filter ahead of the dosatron because you're going to save yourself from any of that stuff that's building in the lines. Don't forget, we have stuff building the lines that could be sloughing off and that comes down into the dosatron. So it's always good to keep in mind that, you know, I'm going to harp on you about filters today. <laughs> All right, we talked about that water hammer arrestor, right? Water hammer being the dynamic energy. We stop that dynamic energy by closing a valve, typically a solenoid, and that energy just has to go somewhere. Now, typically it goes four to five times back. It'll, it'll cause that water hammer and could potentially hurt dosatrons or the inner components. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, this is all water hammer. So he's snapped all the way uh, around that. And that was a fairly new dosatron, right? You can tell there's not much use on that. That's water hammer. Water hammer rester there. That's we talked about that earlier. And that jogging is so important, right? A little jog so that water coming back shoots up into or uh, or into the, I'm um, sorry, the water hammer rester itself. Now here we call for four inches off of the bottom of your stock tanks just to keep grit from building up. Obviously four inches might be excessive in some cases when we're in a five gallon bucket. Maybe two inches is a little bit more reasonable. But the idea is here, you know, listen, I, I used to do it too. You just take the filter, you throw it in your bucket, you set it on your boom, you set it where you need it to use it, and you just go, right? A good idea is just to keep those strainers. I used to zip tie, uh, in this case, just a piece of PVC, um, all those strainers and about a foot of the tubing to a piece of PVC, and it was nice because then I could use it as a stir stick, right, to get my solution uh, agitated, drop that in there, start my boom or start my irrigation system and know that it's going to A, be agitated, B, nothing that does settle, let's say it's not a very soluble fertilizer, is going to be sucked up to the dosatron. 
click charts. Overflow is an issue. We talked about that a little bit, right? So we want to design our, our fertigation system to capture the proper dosatron uh, flow range. If we ever need to know what that flow is of that particular dosatron, you can put your hand on it. We can count how many clicks in 15 seconds, and then we can do some math and figure out what that's going to look like, what our flow is. Uh, the best thing to keep in mind is if it sounds like a machine gun, it's probably too much. So... Our website is fantastic. Um, now, of course, we say that we, you know, designed it and built it. But as a guy that's not super uh, tech savvy on the world of web, this is, I think, a fantastic website, and I think it gets you where you need to go. Um, and please always click on the industry, go to horticulture. That'll drop you right into all the information you need. And then don't forget that we have a, a uh, Dosatron YouTube site as well that shows you all the maintenance tips, troubleshooting, and service videos for everything that we sell. And when you're calling in for service or you want to get parts, there is a part number stamped on the outside of the bell housing Redosatron. That little code right there on the bottom uh, gives us an idea of your serial and the age of the unit so we can help you figure out what maintenance items you may need at that point. Okay. And then of course, it's very important that you know your EC. So test what comes out of your dosers, right, or your injectors. Uh, the reason that's so important is because, you know, do, as dosatron, we find that we end up um, very accurate, uh, you know, within the first year to three years. But, you know, after time, we wear that plunger seal, which is doing all the work of injection. So any, this goes with any of your water-powered injectors, right? Please test the water coming out of it and assure that it is what you want. Typically... You're not going to over inject, you're going to under inject. So if you have it set, you know you made your stock thing pro properly and you just can't get the number you're looking for, it's more than likely time to do a seal kit. There's calibration solution. So it's really important that we're, we're using calibration solution to calibrate those probes and keep them calibrated. You know, and I just realized we, we I skipped a slide uh, about calibration on the dosatrons, but it's important that you know what your dosatron's performance is. So as you go through the process of, of knowing your EC and pH uh, and, and it not meeting your expectation, then there's something called a volumetric test. And a volumetric test is going to go uh, allow you to test your dosatron and calibrate it. Once you calibrate it, you're going to know whether or not those seals need a little bit of work as well. So that process can be found again on the website and go down to technical and you'll find the volumetric test for both dosatron by itself and dosatron in a series configuration, which we call the nutrient delivery system. And obviously EC is important. We all know that. Uh, setting your injector is important, but the reason we want to check our P, uh, EC is because maybe you sent somebody else to mix your bag and they mixed it at the 200 ppm nitrogen and you meant to have them mix it at the 100 ppm nitrogen. So if we don't check our AC coming out of there, we're gonna be twice as hot as we want. So we do carry uh, HN Digital, which is a great little handheld probe and they are waterproof. And they're available obviously through Testman. We give you good information on how to keep those uh, meters calibrated. And it's really important that we do. Take a lot of pride in our customer service. So I hope everybody here who has had interface with Dosatron sees that. Um, our number one goal is customer satisfaction at all times. And obviously having the, the equipment we have makes it a lot easier because equipment is so great. But our customer service uh, we feel is fantastic. So anytime you need us, please call us um, directly for the service. You know, Testman will be able to get you any and all parts and components and Dosatrons you need. Um, but a lot of times we go ahead and just take that technical service. We try to take that on directly to help you through the process. So um, always feel free to call us directly for technical support. And then, of course, if you do need to send dosatrons in or you have a pile of dosatrons you've had for 20 years and you just don't know what to do with them, if you don't mind spending the money to ship them to us, we'll go through all of them at no charge to you and make sure that they are all uh, what we can do with them. And then at the end of the day, we'll come up with a list of things that you either need to repair or buy from us or have us repair. So it's a good, it's a good alternative to doing this work yourself. Of course, dosatrons are fully serviceable, 100% in the field. Uh, I used to do all my own dosatron service. And lastly, we'll touch on the carts. Um, so the dosa carts makes everything mobile, 
right? So the idea is in this case, it's a contained 15 gallon cart that we can put the dosatrons on. And in this case, it's a uh, more, if it's a five gallon bucket or a six gallon pail um, or carbo, I'm sorry. And with that said, this is, I think the best system for most greenhouses. Now, when we're in, when, excuse me, when we are in uh, uh, garden centers and somewhere where containment is so incredibly important because of human health hazards, well, then the dosa cart's a fantastic fit, right? Or sanitizers, if we're going to use foaming, um, you know, ox, uh, uh, sorry, zero tall or sanitate for foaming, and we want to keep those oxidizers contained so that spillage is, is minimized, great, great solution. Otherwise, the little buddy to me is the best fit because we can swap those buckets. It's really easy, put in whatever product we need. And of course, we're going to be able to, um, you know, make, uh, make that, that pinpoint application much easier. So that's all I have for you today, folks. I hope you, uh, hope you learned something new today and hopefully it was informative enough to, to, uh, take home some tidbit. It was great, Chris. Thanks a lot. Um, I didn't have any other questions come up, but if you guys got questions, you can get a hold of me or Sam or James, and we'll do our best to answer them, or we'll get a hold of Chris and he can answer them for us. And one last note, um, this webinar has been recorded, so if you'd like to watch it again or show it to some of your staff, uh, just let us know and we'll send you a link to the uh, Tessman YouTube channel, and I believe eventually it'll be posted there. So without anything else, um, no other questions, um, I think we'll end the webinar. Thanks again, Chris. Thank you all so much.